It's generally well known that the Nintendo 64 version of Ocarina of Time runs at 20 frames per second during normal gameplay, and this is the answer most people who know things about the game will tell you. Well, I'm here to tell you that's a straight up lie. But it's a lie for a good reason. To explain this fully, let me show you exactly how frames are handled in Ocarina of Time. On the right here, we have the game running, and on the left we have Task Studio. This lets me go through the game frame by frame and provide inputs on each individual frame. I hope this is simple enough to understand. Each row represents one frame in the game, and each column is inputs on the Nintendo 64 controller. So we've got control stick X and Y, D-pad buttons, start, Z, B, A, C buttons, and then finally L trigger and R trigger. As you can see, we're currently on frame zero. Let's see what happens when I advance the game by one frame and pay close attention to Link. I advanced one frame, and you may have noticed that nothing happened. Let's advance one more frame. You may have noticed nothing happened. Let me advance a third frame, and again, pay close attention to Link. You may have noticed that Link moved a tiny bit. What you just observed is a single visual frame rendering an Ocarina of Time, but I needed to advance three frames for it to do so. So what's going on here? The reality is that Ocarina of Time pulls for input 60 times a second which is referred to as an input frame, and that's what really is represented by the individual rows here. On the other hand, the game only visually updates once every three input frames, and 60 divided by 3 is 20, which results in most people observing that the game runs at 20 frames per second. So you might be asking, how do inputs work given this information? Let's start with a simple input. On frame 0, I'm going to add a B press. We can see that this results in Link grabbing and slashing his sword, with the first frame of the slash occurring on frame 21. Since this is 21 input frames after the B press on frame 0, we can divide by 3 and come to the conclusion that it takes 7 visual frames from pressing the B button to the beginning of the slash. Let me now replay this, but instead I will put the B press one frame later. We can see that this results in the sword coming out and the same first frame of the slash is on frame 21 even though I put the B press one frame later. You may expect that by putting the B press another frame later, the exact same thing happens, and the beginning of the slash is on frame 21. Only by moving the B press to the next visual frame on frame 3 will the sword slash occur later, this time on frame 24, which is three input frames or one visual frame later than before. If I were to, for example, put a B press and an A press on subsequent input frames, but during the same visual frame. The game still treats this as pressing both buttons at the same time, and will update the next visual frame accordingly. Hopefully this makes sense to you so far because, unfortunately, it's about to get a lot more complicated. Take a look at what happens if I try to press the R button to shield on frame 0. Nothing appears to happen. This is the same case on frame 1. And only by putting the R press on frame 2, the last frame before a visual update, will the shield action occur. It may seem strange, but for hold actions such as targeting, moving, and shielding, the game only checks if the input is held when a visual update occurs, which explains why the shield only happened when I put the R press on frame 2. To give a more explicit example, let me put an up press on frame 2, again this is the last frame before the next visual update, and I'll repeat that every 3 frames. As we can see, the game treats this as if up is being held the entire time, and Link moves forward. Now I'll do the opposite. I'll put an up press on every first and second input frame of a visual frame, leaving the third one blank, and again I'll repeat this every three frames. As we can see, absolutely nothing happens because up isn't ever being held when a visual update occurs. It might be hard to wrap your head around, but for hold actions, the only frame that the game is concerned with is the final input frame before the next visual update. Even if there's gaps on the next first and second input frames, as long as it sees the input being held on each third input frame, then the game treats this input as being held the entire time. This is fundamentally different to how the game treats press actions. To demonstrate this, I'm going to do the same thing as before, putting an up press on the final input frame, but I'm also going to put an A press here. If we are to believe that the A press behaves the same way as a hold action, then the game will treat this as holding A the entire time, 
but as we can see, even though Link is moving forward constantly, he's rolling over and over, meaning that the game is registering individual presses and releases of the A button. And this shows exactly how hold actions are different from press actions. Another good demonstration of how this works is with swimming. One well-known technique in this game is that by pressing B repeatedly while swimming will make Link swim faster, and the faster you mash it, the faster it goes. A common question that arises from people who learn this is, how fast could one mash to get the maximum swimming speed, or how many times can you press B per second to get the fastest swim? If you didn't have the information presented in this video so far, your answer would likely be 10 presses per second, as with a 20 frames per second game, you would need 2 frames to complete the full action of pressing and releasing the B button, any faster, and the game would just consider the B button to be held the entire time. For most games that involve mashing, this would be the case, but as I've shown with OOT, that's not exactly right here. Instead, you might arrive at the answer 30 per second, as we actually have 60 input frames to work with. And while it's true that doing this achieves the maximum swimming speed, that's not exactly the right answer either. While we have the capacity to register both a press and release of the B button during a single visual frame, the game is not able to register more than one B press on that same visual frame. As such, the best answer to this question is 20 presses per second, as anything faster won't increase the total number of B presses registered. Take a look at how Link swims if I do 30 presses a second, compared to 20 presses per second, and you'll notice that he surfaces on the exact same frame each time. Let's now take a look at a technique that requires mashing a hold action instead. A strat called frame walking can be performed by mashing the Z button while walking forward, and unlike the previous example, here I need to alternate visual frames where Z is pressed and released, as again, the game only checks for a hold action on the final input frame of each visual update. Here we can see that I have a Z press every 6 input frames, or 10 frames a second, to achieve this technique. Any faster, and the game would consider this holding Z the entire time. At this point you might be wondering if hold actions and press actions are separated by individual button presses, but this isn't the case either. Take push blocks for example, which require you to hold the A button to grab onto them. We can see here that this behaves the same way as other hold actions, where it only works if A is held on the third input frame each time. A weird side case is spin attacks, which require the B button to be held for at least 8 frames. While this mostly behaves like a hold action, with the B presses occurring on the final input frame of each visual frame, the seventh frame requires that the B button is held for the entire frame, making it completely different from how hold actions normally behave. Anything less than this, and you won't get the spin attack animation. I don't really know why this works, this is really weird, but perhaps someone who knows more about decomp is able to explain this. This is as much as I was able to figure out. With all this being said, does this ever have an effect on real-time gameplay? The answer is... no, not really. This is meant mostly as a fun knowledge dive into the inner workings of the game. But this is why most people, even those who are extremely knowledgeable about the game, will simply answer that it runs at 20 frames per second, because that's what matters for human gameplay, and nobody really cares to give the long-winded explanation that I just gave. For most relevant purposes involving human execution, input frames really are not a factor. There's almost never a reason why you'd want or need to use them, and doing it in a way that matters is typically way too precise. There's only one spot I know of where input frames are actually relevant in speedrunning, and it's not even an OOT, it's the Japanese Majora's Mask Postman minigame. But as a quick demonstration of how to observe this phenomenon in real time, I'll attempt to tap Z very lightly in an effort to not target this sign. It's not going to happen every time, but every so often I'll get a Z press that's one or two frames that doesn't fall on the final input frame before a visual update, and you'll notice that the target will not occur when this happens. It's worth mentioning that switch targeting is a little weird here, uh, it seems like if you do a target input on the last input frame, then there's a 15 frame window afterwards where the input is treated like a press action before reverting back to a hold action, I, I don't know, it's weird. The last thing to talk about is how the game changes frame rate. It's well known that the game's pause menu runs at 30 frames per second, and the file select screen runs at 60 frames per second. This is achieved with a byte in memory that acts as a divisor of 60. During normal gameplay, this byte is set to 3, dividing 60 into 20, and during the pause screen it's set to 2, dividing into 30. On the pause screen, navigating the menu with the control stick counts as a hold action, 
And here the rule still applies where only the last input frame before a visual update matters. Except, of course, here there's only two input frames per visual frame. There's not really much to talk about with the file select screen, but an interesting thing to notice is to compare what it looks like on N64 hardware compared to Wii Virtual Console. Although the game tries to run this at 60 frames per second, it's simply too much for the N64 hardware, and it appears slower as a result. Wii VC, on the other hand, has the ability to run this at its real frame rate, providing the only instance in Ocarina of Time that is truly, without any asterisks attached, 60 frames a second.